Recently, we gave you a first impression of the Moza Vision GS. The wheel is now available and in this video we draw our first conclusions about its use, who this wheel is actually for and show you the features and setup in detail. Here we go. Before you buy a steering wheel, you should know a few basics and above all, make an informed purchase decision because not every steering wheel is suitable for your own driving style. Many factors come into play, the first of which is your budget of course. At the time of the video, the Vision GS starts at $750 or just under 830 euros. Moza currently offers 8 different steering wheels and the Vision GS is also compatible with all wheelbases from R3 to R21. Unfortunately, only for PC at the moment. If you mainly drive road cars, NASCAR, trucks, rally or drift, you are better off with one of the round wheels in Formula, GT3 or prototypes, which are currently the most popular categories in online racing, you might prefer a Formula style wheel like this one. Of course. This also has something to do with the steering angle because in these disciplines you usually drive between 360 and 540 degrees of wheel rotation and have to turn much less often than in hairpins of, of a rally for example. So let's assume that you are interested in the Vision GS, you see yourself more in the GT3, LMDH, prototypes or formula category. If we stay in the Moza ecosystem we still see four different wheels in the price range from 309 to 829 euros. GS V2P, FSR and Vision GS differ in the following ways. Form factor, thumb rest, grip material, diameter, weight, button layout and of course display or no display. They all feature shift LEDs, magnetic shift pedals, dual clutch pedals, and thumb wheel encoders. The central element of the Vision GS is the circular central display which, along with the futuristic design, is the biggest innovation compared to the FSR. I also find the diameter of 310mm compared to 280 on the FSR to be a little more comfortable when measuring the steering, uh, especially on the GT cars when turning into corners, when turning in in a Formula car where you want it a bit more pointy, the FSR is slightly ahead. Especially on the top area, the buttons on the FSR and GS V2P are a little easier to reach with your thumb than on the Vision GS. But that's not a huge game breaker for me. The Vision GS also has two buttons on the back, which I think is a good idea. If you go for the Vision GS, the 310mm, the slightly higher quality materials with the microfiber leather and the bold design will probably be the deciding factors and the fact that you want something special on your rig. The Vision GS comes, of course, with the steering wheel, a storage bag, two sheets of stickers for labeling the buttons, a plastic tweezer for applying those stickers, a wrench for unscrewing and adjusting the rear pedals, and an easy to follow instruction manual is also in the package. The aluminum quick release is very intuitive to use and also very sturdy. As you can see, there's almost no flex. And the easiest way to use it is to use the ball bearing notches as a reference. With a little pressure, the quick release engages automatically. To release, simply pull back on the black ring with a little force. It should be mentioned that the Vision GS is also compatible with other manufacturers' bases using the Moza hub and adapter kit. To set up your Vision GS, you will need the Moza Pithouse software, which can be downloaded from the Moza website. You can also use the software to update the firmware of your products. The first tab right under home is the wheelbase settings. In my example today, we are using the R12 base for driving, for which there are also some presets. If we move the mouse over GT, for example, we see presets for AC, ACC, iRacing and AMS2. I can say that I really like the ACC and iRacing setups right out of the box for most of the cars I drive. It's a good starting point. Next to each setting, there is a small exclamation mark that explains it with the help text. In the wheel tab, 
you can see all the buttons and check their function. On the right, we find an important setting for our dual clutch pedals. You can specify whether they should share an axle or form a separate axle. In axis combine mode, you can set a bite point so that, for example, pulling the left pedal will only engage the clutch 40% of the time. It helps a lot to get a manual start as fast as possible in the Porsche Cup or Super Formula in iRacing, for example. Even if in this example it wasn't perfect. Green flag, green flag. I think 30 to 70 percent is a bit better in the Porsche Cup. When the light turns green, you immediately release the right clutch and then slowly release the left clutch. If you don't need this function, you can also set it to button mode. Then you have these two as separate buttons as well. The band knob mode determines whether your rotary encoders here take one of the 12 fixed positions or function as plus and minus switches. You can also configure the RPM LEDs and some telemetry functions there in the menus. In various simulations, you can set signals, like light signals here in this LED stripe, uh, for example, when your ABS or TCS engage, as well as flags or the active pit limiter. This gives you not only more racing feel, more atmosphere, but also visual feedback on yeah, what your car and what your systems are doing. At the top right in this menu, in this tab, you find the dashboard settings area, which relates to your 2.85 inch circular screen. There are almost no limits to creativity here, and this is what sets the Vision GS apart from the FSR, for example, and the FSR with its predefined speedometers. The presets here can be copied, customized, or you can build something completely new from scratch and also switch between pages using the touchscreen. You can drag telemetry and graphics into the template and yeah, literally can spend hours with it. You can also turn off the so-called gravity sensing where the screen always tries to yeah, stand up straight. For me personally, this is the better option to have it fixed kinda. It's, it's better for readability in my, in my opinion. Not everyone needs a screen on a steering wheel, of course, or extra dashboards and stuff, but with this level of customization, it is definitely kind of useful, especially if you want to race without HUD displays in the game on screen, to have better immersion, for example. The inputs or even tire values or lap times can be easily toggled with a swipe while driving. At the moment of recording, not all telemetry works 100% in every simulation. I have not yet been able to get the track map to work at all, otherwise ACC and iRacing as my two examples are among the most complete in terms of values displayed. There are no special settings needed to get it to work. On the Moza website there are FAQs and instructions for all major racing games on how to enable telemetry in case it doesn't work out of the box. You should also check in Pit House to see if your games have been detected and configured. Um, then communication and profiles are usually created. We hope you enjoyed this tour. Feel free to use the comment section to tell us about your wheels and whether you find the Vision GS interesting or not. After the first week of testing, I'm definitely having a blast. Yeah, thanks for watching and staying tuned to the very end. Be sure to check out Emily's video on the Gran Turismo 7 update. There's a lot to love about, especially at the beginning. See you soon.